Well, I'm here on the pre-day one of the Qualcomm event in Hawaii, and I'm joined by Ingmar Bruder. He is the founder and CEO of Trinamics, and they have a very cool new face authentication system. So let's have a look at the presentation, and thank you for taking the time to show me. Alex, thank you very much for being here, and I suggest we jump right into our demo. Let's go for it. So uh, why are we doing that? And um, well, your phone is your wallet, your photo album, your contact list is very important in your life, mm -hmm. our lives, and it deserves certainly the highest protection. And uh, we did that actually without compromising on design and convenience. How are we doing that? Well, um, as shown here, Trinamics Face Authentication is a premium solution to secure the data on your smartphone. Mm -hmm. And it's a very powerful um, a very powerful solution based on three pillars, which is security, design, and convenience. And I want to actually walk you through what I, what I mean with that. So first of all, our technology is certified by the three major certification and institutes or, or certificates out there. First mm -hmm. of all, the so-called FIDO Alliance, which um, is actually an alliance based on um, yeah, relevant OEMs dealing with uh, secure authentication, for example, uh, Samsung, Qualcomm, Amazon, Microsoft, and others. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have been granted final level C, which is about the highest certification level you can get in this area. Uh, the Chinese pendant of uh, the FIDO lines is the IIFAA, so it's um, mandatory to get a certificate to pay with um, Alipay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we achieved that and finally and certainly Android um, um, level 3, which is the highest level. And we all um, actually, we achieved that with an SAR, so a smooth acceptance rate of zero. Basically, none of these institutes could smooth our technology. So that's a spoof? Acceptance rate. Exactly. SIR. SIR, and that was zero. Very good. And um, yeah, actually, you can download all the certificates from, from our homepage. And the very neat thing is actually that we achieved all these certificates uh, with our technology being mounted behind an OLED display. So we are the first company actually bringing this technology on the market, achieving all the security by mounting it behind an OLED display. And this is certainly um, leading into a, a very nice design feature because it allows OEMs to position this technology wherever they want behind the screen without having necessity of notches or um, pinholes anymore. So, so it's, a, it's a notch above because it needs no notch. Exactly. Yeah, and um, last thing here is certainly convenience. So it's an optical technology. There is no need to touch or pin something in. It's an optical technology. And um, yeah, these are basically the three pillars. Our technology is based on security, design, and convenience. Okay. And um, so that's in a nutshell actually why we are doing it and actually how we are doing it. And we want to right jump into a, a demo actually to showing it to you that it's real. Okay, so it's time for the demo and I'm with Dr. Wilfried Hermes. He's the Director of Consumer Electronics North America and Europe at Trinamics and we're gonna see a really cool demo. So please take it away. Hi. Hi, Alex. Um, so this is my mask. It's a silicon <laughs> mask and looks pretty similar to me. With this kind of mask, um, you can almost spoof um, all foods. Yeah. Um, and what we developed, as Ingmar showed before, is a new way of technology for face authentication to introduce it behind an OLED screen. Mm -hmm. Here you see now the first phone yeah. where we integrated our small reference design. Yeah. Just hold that little chip in front of the screens because I'm just going to zoom right into it. And uh, yeah, I can see that there. This is behind the OLED screen. Yeah, so it's, it would be, would be at the top in the middle. It's over here. Right, where you'd expect it to be. Yeah. 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 Great. So unroll. So now I'm enrolled. Yep. I do my face unlock mm -hmm. myself. Let me just uh, zoom in. Okay. And I'm enrolled. Yeah, it's unlocked. What I do now is I, did, I take my mask. Mm -hmm. And first I switch on liveness detection. Yep. So um, now I do it with just 2D recognition. Mm -hmm. Take my mask and it now blocks. Yeah. But now I switch on liveness detection. Access denied. Access denied, no skin detected. Yeah. There you go. So basically, that's the demo. Yeah. So what we developed is a method to distinguish between skin and non-skin 
on top of 2D recognition and with this, as Ingmar showed before, um, zero spoof acceptance rate. And you've got a mask there too? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Ingmar, you're going to show me uh, some of the technical details behind the, how the solution works. So uh, take us through it. Ah, yeah, thanks, Alex. So basically, uh, to make that work, we combine hardware and software in a very unique way. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Well, our product uh, contains out of actually two parts. First of all, a, a hardware module, uh, which can uh, be integrated behind OLED, as you have seen before. Um, it's a, a, yeah, a tiny module that fits behind all uh, commercial available OLED screens and it contains actually three parts, this module. First of all, a flood illumination, ensuring that our technology is working in a complete darkness, mm -hmm. a dot projector and a CMOS camera. Um, <clears throat> uh, the hardware is built out of a standard hardware components, which makes it very, very affordable. And uh, the second part, very important part, is, is the software, uh, which uh, um, actually contains a multi-layer face authentication. Multi-layer means that our technology or the algorithms are analyzing two data streams, which is a 2D face detection, a classical 2D face uh, detection, and on top of it, a skin detection, which makes this technology so unique, actually passing all these um, certificates or certifications and um, yeah, enabling that we can distinguish human faces from hyper-realistic silicon masks, which you have seen in the demo before. Sure. And uh, our software is running uh, um, yeah, perfectly and smoothly in the uh, Qualcomm trusted execution environment. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so basically that's it in a nutshell how the technology is working and um, it has um, or is completely IP protected. I think it's very important to mention. Yeah. Uh, we do have over 200 grand and uh, pending patents for our face authentication technology. And um, yeah, it's also available. So uh, it's ready for smartphone integration with OEMs now. And so when do you think we will actually see this in commercially available phones? In, yeah. in, in about a year's time or? Yeah, so we have started already uh, several integration um, projects with uh, OEMs and you will see this technology latest by 24 in first products. And it finally gives Android the same kind of uh, facial identification we've seen on another big brand that's been in the market that's not Android. And I mean, that has been very useful. I've, I've loved using that. In fact, one of the things that uh, has become recently useful is the ability to do uh, the facial identification with a mask. Yeah. So does this technology allow you to have the mask on as well? Absolutely. So it does. And um, yeah, what we do even beyond what you explained before that, as we have mentioned, is working behind an OLED. And this mm -hmm. is something you don't find in the market. Yeah. No, but that is unique. Yeah. I mean, to get rid of the notch completely. And uh, now that we've seen with uh, Samsung, the under display cameras, I mean, they're evolving as well. Yeah. You, you, don't, you don't do any camera technology? No. Just we focusing have, on the... Exactly, yeah. yeah. And this brings me also to a point which I want to lay out here, our partners. So when you're asking here about like, do we do cameras? And I'm happy here to explain a little bit more our, sure. our um, ecosystem. Um, so um, very important to say here that our hardware is um, agnostic to certain specific vendors. So certainly we are designing and adapting our module according to the needs of the OEM. Mm -hmm. However, the reference design, which you have seen on the table a second before what Wilfried showed you, uh, was designed and manufactured together with our hardware partner AMS Osram regarding the projector, uh, our camera partner ST Microelectronics, and certainly Qualcomm is our strategic partner in terms of like um, integration, the software in our in, in their um, trusted uh, environment, and um, certainly also our partner regarding um, yeah attracting um, OEMs out in the market. Now, another question revolves around. The Silence of the Lambs, where they were making, uh, you know, skin suits, and if you ever watched the uh, the Batwoman show, there was a plot line where somebody was creating faces from skin that magically wasn't, you know, rotting. I mean, it's a TV show. So, what happens if you if somebody tries to use dead skin on a mask to try and fool the system? So we have conducted a lot of tests and um, studies, and actually. Um, yeah, to ensure that we can distinguish precisely dead skin from living skin, um, because um, yeah, the the, the um, physical properties of, of these uh, let's call it materials are um, different in a way that we can detect it, detect it precisely. So, and this is also a reason, as we have shown before, why we achieved all the certification processes with a 0% SAR, because all our customers can be ensured if they're using our technology that their data is perfectly protected.
Well, it's very cool that we've been able to see this. I'm the first journalist, uh, according to you, that's seen this tech. I mean, everyone's going to see it over the next few days. Yeah. And uh, you said you're going to be on stage as well, which will be wonderful to see. Um, but, uh, you know, what was involved in creating this technology? And, and wh how come it's taken so long to emerge compared to the fact that, you know, that this sort of technology has been available on the fruit company's devices? And we've seen some of the Android guys try to do it, but, but you guys seem to be the first to really get to nail it. Um, thank you very much for the question. It's basically two reasons. Um, first of all, um, from a physical point of view, this technology works completely different compared to structured light or time of light. Mm. And it takes us quite a while actually to get all the hardware together and, and, and developing also the, um, the algorithms in a way to achieve the certificates and actually ensuring that the ecosystem working is in a, in a way that it can be implemented into a consumer product. And, and did the technology need to be miniaturized? Yes, absolutely, yeah. And that took also quite quite some time to do that. And uh, as you have seen, now we're here. Yeah, uh, well, so, uh, there, there it is, this yeah. tiny little module. Yeah, and also important to mention here, so this is a reference design which we have developed together with our partner, however, um, this is uh, something which can be easily adapted according to the wishes of the OEM. Uh, so we are hardware agnostic and we are designing uh, the final modules according to the specs of our, of our customers. The second part is why it took so long is actually the OLED itself. <clears throat> so um, uh, we need kind of a semi-transparent uh, OLED and the first commercial displays have arised last year. Yep. And uh, we are working closely together with various of these uh, vendors, actually ensuring that our technology is working seamlessly behind these displays and both have to work together to provide this user experience. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't have worked with LCD because it had a exactly. big shining light behind it. Exactly. So it needed this level of OLED <laughs> yeah. to, to work. Yeah. So how quickly do you hope it will be adopted by almost every Android maker, at least in their flagships, to you know, get this rolled out as quickly as possible? So we are going for integration now, so we have several integration projects running mm -hmm. and the latest um, 2024 we receive first first um, products in the market so and from there um, at least we hope that we see it on all Android phones and that's also the reason why we partnered up with Qualcomm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they're the source for a lot of the Android uh, smartphone chips in the market, certainly the flagship ones. Uh, what other work are you doing in this space or is this the main project for now? Certainly our focus and market entries uh, will be in the, uh, or with uh, smartphones in the consumer electronics business. However, what we can disclose is that we are working also in other fields, for example, automotive. Mm -hmm. um, various tiers and OEMs are very interested to use this technology for actually getting into a car, um, actually getting a car started or in-car payment. Yeah. And uh, this is something also where we are very active, but certainly lead times in automotive are longer in consumers. Yeah. But the technological core is always the same, right? And this is also the reason why we are uh, very yeah, um, optimistic yeah, that this technology finds um, yeah, other places than just uh, the consumer or the smartphone. Sure, sure. Or oh, you could imagine so many things that would need authentication yeah. that could even consumer... Access control. Yeah, yeah. even just home appliances. I mean, exactly. if, it, if it becomes... a affordable enough that you could stick it into anything then you could make sure the kids for example couldn't uh, open up freezers or get into washing machines and then drown or, or suffocate which yeah. has happened um, now I understand a very famous German company is where Trinamics was born so what's the story of uh, Trinamics's birth and what's the story of the name <laughs> well um, yeah Trinamics um, roots are in the central research of BASF mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the physical phenomena based on uh, our technology was uh, with organic molecules. So this was uh, the past and certainly we transferred it to silicon electronics. <laughs> where is it now where it's scalable and actually we can actually have provided an equality uh, which is appreciated by OEMs and tiers. Um, so that was actually the route, right? And where we have started uh, within a chemical company. The name Trinamics is a wordplay. The tri comes from three dimensions mm -hmm. and namics from dynamic. Right, very cool. And uh, you said before the technology is affordable. Obviously, when you're talking about smartphone makers making 
you know, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions. Yeah. But are you able to say what a module might cost, roughly speaking, yeah. for a... Because people want to know for their bill of materials calculations. So we can say it very precisely. Mm -hmm. However, we are disclosing these numbers only to the OEMs we're sure. working with. But we want to give you a flavor. Yep, yep. And um, so a competing technology uh, to actually get it behind OLED is the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor. Mm -hmm. And this technology comes about the same price. Right, okay. So it just makes it a... A no-brainer for Android companies wanting to start off with their flagships and over time it will just yeah. appear in everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, how do you see Trinamics evolving over the next couple of years? So first of all, we see um, face authentication module in, in Android phones. Um, starting from there, um, we, as, as Ingmar said before, we will enter other verticals like automotive and other uh, markets, access control for the residuals and commercials. Um, we have other technologies which we are following, um, also bringing to the consumers. So um, we believe that we will bring consumer technology from Germany um, into smartphones. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, um, can you both please share a memory of your first computer and then your first smartphone? I'm always curious to you know, how people... <laughs> I know it very exactly. It was a 386 mm -hmm. DX with a turbo button. Uh -huh. I, like that very yeah, much I remember that. that. I remember that. I remember yeah, that. It was my first computer. And my first phone was a Sony Ericsson. Mm -hmm. Bluish one. Yeah. And I always have to smash it on the ground <laughs> because it uh, had like uh, some contacts didn't work well. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I had same phone, Sony Ericsson. That was yeah. my first one, but computer, uh, the first one was the uh, Amiga 500. Ah, I love that. I had two of them. I was playing all the games. It was an arcade <laughs> machine at home. It was a wonderful time. But I still remember Karataka and Prince of Persia on the Apple II. Yeah. So my second last question is simply to ask you if you could both please share some of the best advice you've received in life to help you get where you are today. Never get things granted. Say that again. So that you don't get things. Never take it? things for granted. Yeah. Yes. Never take things for granted. Never take things for granted. Exactly. Yeah. What, what is there, was there something you took for granted and you learned the lesson? Well, or did it come from a parent or a teacher? Uh, it, it comes. It came from a teacher, right? When I was at university, I'm a physicist by training, mm -hmm. and new things are usually born out of curiosity. Yeah. You do an experiment, it's like, oh, that's funny, yeah. and you've discovered penicillin or something. Yeah, <laughs> and actually, um, you know, uh, whales and bats are uh, doing it forever, actually, you know, using ultrasonic to do certain depths of Echo location, yeah. yeah. actually, and uh, you have like two eyes and doing a certain like stereo principle yeah. uh, to, to actually have something in place or to distinguish uh, certain things, and we came up with a novel. Uh, technology which nature is not doing actually to distinguishing precisely between certain yeah, facts and um, uh, yeah well they always say you don't know what you've got until it's gone so never take anything for granted yeah that's good advice and Wilfred I think that's a very good advice Ingmar um, so what helped me I think um, it helped me already in my study, um, doing my study and doing my PhD and also here in the company. Um, so making things, making prototypes, doing experiments instead of thinking about it and making PowerPoints. So yeah. doing, making prototypes and go to the customer with it, get feedback. Get feedback early as possible and show the things and talk about them. That's another way of saying never wait for the perfect moment, just start. Exactly. Because yeah. you've got to start somewhere. and. Uh... And then magic can happen. So my final question is, what is your final message to ITY viewers and readers and to your current and future customers and partners, of which hopefully there'll be a great many more? Well, Trinamics will be the first company bringing super secure face authentication uh, behind OLEDs. And uh, if you want to actually use this technology uh, in, in your products, uh, here we are. Wonderful. And any final message from you, Wilfred? I think there's nothing to add. So Trinamics will be on um, the company bringing the highest secure face authentication solution in the Android world so that everyone can have this ugly mask of himself but <laughs> don't, cannot spoof the phones. <laughs> well, congratulations on creating this technology. It's uh, beyond time for Android to have this capability. And I look forward to seeing it uh, 
in about a year's time in all the, the major phones. So congratulations. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you.